Yeah, actually, like Riot put out um, like a Pro V or something. Yeah, actually, it was yeah. really really helpful because especially for us LCS players, like we can see pretty much what they look at. So I think it's kind of like I, like the feeling right now is just like kind of broken because like we. <laughs> but it's like everyone everyone has tools for it so like mm -hmm. i think that's the even run but right now it's like um i guess they have more to learn than us because like um since we're at the top like they can follow what we do yo this is zento here from esports heaven and i have here with me again uh Team Liquid's Zick Smithy. Hello. Now, you guys just beat uh, TSM mm -hmm. uh, in pretty convincing fashion. Um, but I want to harken back to MSI because mm -hmm. uh, it seems like, you know, teams get punished when they do good and they're like internationally successful. Uh, but has coming back, has it affected you guys in terms of? Uh, burnout because this is what Doublelift had talked about previously about uh, players having possible burnout you know from having an extended schedule so what is it from your perspective well I think burnout is definitely a big factor on your motivation your motivation and, and like just playing the game uh, I've experienced it before um, way long ago like six five years ago I had to take like a, a one split break and okay. to get back into it so it definitely is a burnout if you play too much and especially um, the situation that is right now that if you win you pretty much play more games so you have less break time um, and MSI we had maybe five days break so six days break depends on where you live so yeah it was it was it was pretty hard especially for some certain players that I can't believe we have only this amount of time like and then they're like had a kind of a, like a argument about it. it's like if you wanted more break or mm -hmm. if you sacrifice the first week or should we put our academy in or <laughs> what should we do so yeah we came to the conclusion that like we shouldn't be like too confident overconfident that we're just gonna let our academy play the first week and just take a break but like it's not really right so mm -hmm. we just practice and endured it and yeah hopefully we benefit or we we saw the benefits after or later. Okay, uh, so I want to get into the the game uh, against CSM because uh, you guys had banned Yumi uh, yeah. and you were on blue <laughs> side. And I found that kind of strange because uh, at least from my initial impression, I would think that would be a red side ban uh, given how strong pros have said, you know, that she's actually really good in competitive play. So is this kind of a, a side effect of MSI, you know, the MSI hangover of mm -hmm. you not being as practiced as other teams when it comes to this patch? Yeah, I think it definitely is like a big difference. Like if you've been scrimming for this patch for the last month or compared to like the last week, um, not everyone practiced a new champion for like 30 games because we didn't really have time. You only had one week and no one really wanted to solo queue during the break. So. Yeah, like, no one can really play, like, 30... Like, Core can't play 30 Yugi, Yumi games, especially when he was in Korea also. Yeah. That he can't really practice. So, yeah, I think that was, like, one, one of the factors that we couldn't... That we didn't really play... Prioritize Yumi. Mm -hmm. But also, at the same time, I think there's, like, much more broken champions um, that are available in this patch that we think that's better. So that's why we just banned Yumi, because maybe... Because I think we've looked at some of these like track records, like he played, he played like maybe like thirty Yumi games or something. So like we just didn't want to <laughs> okay. have that like X factor in. Yeah. Uh, so another pick that seems to be pretty prevalent right now is Azir. Mm -hmm. uh, strangely, but looking back at the MSI meta, we've seen that games are quite fast paced. So you would think that Azir isn't a good pick now. But uh, what's what's your opinion on Azir mm -hmm. and? TSM taking a zier, and I know uh, during right now this current game, it's a hundred thieves versus CLG, and there's an Azir pick as well in that too. So what's what's the whole uh, you know spiel with Azir mm. right now? Um, I think the big difference just in meta compared to NA compared to pretty much internationally is more people are uh, they want to they they are still want to do some risk like they like they do a lot of early advantages that Azir can't really dish out so like Azir uh -huh. is really bad in early game 
And in our game, like we had really strong early game champions like Olaf, even Silas, like we we took advantage of it really well. And Azirius pretty much doesn't come online until like 20, 25 minutes. And what we learned from MSI is like we can snowball pretty well. And if we just do that, like late game, late game is pretty much just not a thing anymore compared to like internationally. Yeah. So that's what that's what we learned a lot. Okay. Uh, so. Double lift got a triple kill bot pretty early on in the game, mm -hmm. and you were kind of there at the right place at the right time yeah. um, to counter. So uh, after that, like, how did you guys feel about the game state? Um, well, actually, that fight was really close. Um, um, we planned it that we were gonna counter gank and like if we were gonna gank. So like, I think that ga that pretty much that time was like the make or break type of the game. Like if we lost that fight like if we got triple kill instead and, and Ezra would have been like a really strong pick but we won instead so like I think that's pretty much snowball the game for us for like for especially um, our ball lane is pretty strong so like they know how to take advantage pretty well so we just snowball off the game of that and that's pretty much the game okay um, so I noticed that I believe it was your first gank was for impact mm -hmm. in the top lane uh, so it seems like you're paying a little more attention to impact uh, nowadays especially after your MSI run mm -hmm. so how has that transition been from being a largely bot focused team to now uh, giving impact the reins to carry well um like can't really base off of everything just like off one game, you know. So like that game, we just had a really good match up top, and then the lane or like the lane state was really good for ganking. So we just planned it like a minute before that it's gonna be at this lane state, and maybe if we could uh, cover it or like gank for it. Then pretty much that's game over for top lane, and we just really had really good communication that game, and yeah, it went pretty well. Okay. Uh, so what's your general idea of? changing playstyles because mm. it is said that Team Liquid is a bot oriented team um, but if no one is good enough to essentially challenge you at that type of game then uh, what incentive do you have to change your playstyle? Mm. So uh, what's your idea on changing playstyles uh, for a team? Should, should they be incentivized to actually do that mm. or can you just rely on what you're good at? Well the biggest incentive we have is you know, like international tournaments. Um, you know that we had a really good bot lane, like playstyle kind of team, but it doesn't really work that well um, internationally, um, especially like group stages. Like we almost didn't get in. And once we figure out like, oh, we can snowball on other areas and we can cover pretty much all lanes at the same time. Then that's when we figure out that like, it's not mainly a, a like the playstyle is like bot focus. It's just like, how to play together as a team and like how to snowball from like each other. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of like a, a curse for the top team? Is that <laughs> you're so good that you don't have to change? So do, do you think that's like uh, something to, that's difficult to stay focused on as, as you are a top team and you aren't really challenged in changing play style? Well, I think that's in the challenge itself that um, if you're at the top, like you're not really, really learning that much from anyone playing you're playing if you're at the top so that's why um, you always whenever, whenever we go to international tournaments from the past years even for myself personally like I always had to change like a lot when it's come to international tournaments because not not everyone makes makes mistakes as compared to North America so I have to just keep watching all these um, VODs from pretty much every region and yeah actually like right put out um, like a pro v or something yeah, actually was yeah. really really helpful because especially for us lcs players like we can see pretty much what they look at so i think it's kind of like I, like the feeling right now is just like kind of broken because like we but it's like everyone everyone has tools for it so like mm -hmm. i think that's the even run but right now it's like um i guess they have more to learn than us because like um since we're at the top like they can follow what we do so yeah i think it's just like a give or take uh Another question is, uh, do you think Pro View is going to change the game, like essentially how mm -hmm. pro players level up? Uh, do you think it's going to improve the entire pro scene like tremendously? Is it just uh, for uh, NA in Europe or like? Uh, yeah, yeah, it's for NA in Europe right now, but uh -huh. they're supposed to expand over mm -hmm. towards other leagues and stuff later. Yeah, I think once uh, 
like especially Europe like it's really good to look at what they play and then how their play style is like on their point of view so I think it's gonna be a huge upgrade for pretty much everyone in that scene and once like the Asia the Asian scene like puts like a pro I think they are actually had some like even in MSI but not for everyone so mm -hmm. like if you really want to practice jungling uh, if you really want to focus on that then yeah I think it's a really big change Okay, cool. Uh, oh wait, uh, th another question. Um, y your your hand. Oh, why is it half uh, painted? <laughs> Where's uh, your other hand? It matches the pillow, though. <laughs> it's, it was a uh, uh, so this Albali made me do it. It was supposed to be five, and she said, "Can I uh, like? Can you can you play with that?" I was like, "Huh? Maybe just not the thumb, because like I don't know. Like I don't like my my thumb like having uh, like painted nails on it. But it was like for." Her video like we're really good fans so like she, i don't know what she's doing but she's <laughs> like she has a TikTok or something that she's gonna post something about it so all right all stay right. tuned stay tuned <laughs> looking forward to it yeah. well this has been uh azento from esports heaven and xmithy from team liquid thank, thank you. you cool yeah all right man <laughs> <laughs> and it matches the whole four idea <laughs> i was like wait uh, your fucking, your hand matches the pillow, what? <laughs> it was planned. <laughs> planned all along. Yeah. Alright, brother, well thank you. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thank you. I assume if you made it this far, you probably enjoyed the content. So if you did, subscribe and also check out my other content that's more analytical and opinionated. But otherwise, keep it locked at esportsheaven.com and I'll see you next time. Peace.